Hello, Bronco fans and football fans everywhere. Welcome to Broncos Breakdown on the MHRT Network. This is a show that is everything Broncos, but sports topics related as well. All right, guys, uh, let's just jump into this. We've got a lot of Bronco stuff. We also have two Jackass of the Week. I'm not going to combine them because they they are one in their own rights or wrongs in this case obviously wrongs okay let's jump right into the topic ownership is complete earlier this week last tuesday the nfl owners voted unanimously to approve the walton penner family ownership group rob said and i quote having lived and worked in colorado uh <laughs> have and we've admired the Broncos our enthusiasm has only grown as we've learned more about the team the staff and Broncos country over the past few months end quote now we all know that Rob Walton is the basically the the money provider and all that we we got that and, and it's a Penner family uh, ownership group but I love the fact that he said and uh that that They've been so enthusiastic. The enthusiasm has grown as we've learned more. That's great. That means that they're excited to be in Denver. They're excited to be the owners of the Broncos. I also heard uh, just yesterday that uh, Rob Walton said that that he was absolutely uh, loves the Broncos, and that was the only team that he was that interested in forming a group to buy. And we're not just talking NFL here. We're talking basketball. We're talking soccer, hockey, perhaps. I don't know. He he didn't specify it was just the NFL. He said there were other and numerous teams that needed new ownership. But he said the Broncos were the only one that he wanted to pursue. Now, that makes me feel a lot, a lot, lot better. Because earlier on, when I heard that Rob Walton was in the running to own the Denver Broncos, I wasn't too thrilled because I'm thinking, oh, great. You know, Walmart is obviously where he got his money from. And that's headquartered in ben, ben, Bentonville, Arkansas. So my concern was, are the Broncos going to move to Arkansas? Going to be the Bentonville Broncos, Arkansas Broncos? No, that wasn't going to sit well with me. And it still doesn't sit well. But hearing him say that the Broncos were the only team he really wanted to pursue, that makes me feel much better that he will keep them in Denver. Especially when he said, when he mentioned uh, he got he got to know the uh, the, the staff better, and and the team better, and Broncos country better. That speaks volumes. And I hope he keeps them here. I absolutely hope he keeps the Broncos in Denver. Okay, on the heels of that. We have a new CEO on the Denver Broncos as well. With the new ownership group in place with the Broncos, Greg Penner has been announced as a Broncos new CEO. Penner takes over for the departed Joe Ellis. Ellis, however, will remain with the team as an advisor to the Walton Penner family ownership group for the uh, for the uh, uh, 2022 season. Now that's great because when you know, it's been it's been well documented, especially by uh, Rob Walton himself and uh, Greg Penner backed it up when they were interviewing him. Both of them said that they have never owned a sports team of any of any level, never owned a sports team. So you don't want to just jump in to this whole thing with cold feet. You really don't. You want to have some type of direction, some type of guidance. And Joe Ellis has been with the Broncos organization for 27 years. He's also been the uh, CEO for the last seven, or at least the last four, but, but certainly the last four. So he knows the ins and outs of the Broncos. He's worked with George Payton, the, uh, the GM. He knows the players. He knows how the Broncos organization has been run by Pat Bowen before his illness. Joe Ellis was there 
and Pat Bowen handed the reins over to him, so to speak, and said, okay, it's your ball game. It's your team. Take it over. You're in, in charge of the trust. And that's what Joe Ellis has done. So what better way for Rob Walton and uh, Greg Penner and the rest of the uh, the rest of the um, ownership group to understand the workings and behind the scenes of an NFL franchise, especially the Denver Broncos. And the reason why I say especially is because Pat Bowen ran it correctly, absolutely correctly. And to bring on, or I should say, keep Joe Ellis as an advisor to the ownership group is spectacular, phenomenal, brilliant, brilliant move. And then to have Greg Penner as a CEO, um, he's married to uh, Rob Walton's daughter. So it, it's perfect. I mean, it's a whole family affair. I know that. And sometimes families don't work out, but it worked out with, with the Bowen family. I mean, Pat ran the, the team, obviously. He was in total control. But along with his wife and his and his uh, seven uh, children, I mean, to some degree, they had a part in it. So I see this as extremely helpful. That transition should move a lot more smoothly, be more efficient. And I cannot wait to see how this uh, transpires. And the reason why I say that is because obviously Rob Walton knows what he's doing. And then you got Greg Penner. He knows what he's doing. You have Condoleezza Rice and she knows all the legalities and things behind the scenes. So there's a lot of brain power, I guess, for lack of a better term, in this ownership group. And if they can learn in one season, I know where it, it you know starts now, with the uh, the preseason, the regular season, and hopefully the postseason, and then into next season. I don't know when Joe Ellis uh, is going to uh, uh, not be on as an advisor. He may be on for. I know he's on this year. He may be on for a second year. I don't know. I don't know. There's speculation. Could be Peyton Manning coming in, uh, in in some form and capacity. That hasn't been mentioned. That hasn't been talked about. So I'm not. I mean, it's been mentioned that he's talked that the. Uh, uh, Rob Walton has talked to uh, Peyton Manning, but I don't know it to what capacity that is. But in any case, that's wonderful news that George, uh, excuse me, that Joe Ellis is staying on as an advisor to, uh, especially to uh, Greg Penner, as as well as the rest of the uh, ownership group. Okay, on the heels of the CEO, the Broncos have a new president. The new ownership group, Pat Walter, Walton Penner family, have hired the new Broncos president in Damani Leach. Now, Leach spent the last three seasons as chief operating officer of NFL International. Leach will participate in business operations dealing with Empower Field at Mile High and the UC Health Training Center where the Broncos train. Well... That tells me he's already got hands on. And that's good. He, if he was in charge of NFL International, you know he has to know the, the workings and the dealings with stadiums, with practice facilities, with uh, weight rooms, locker rooms, all the all the things that happen at a stadium to get ready, all the way you know down to the field crew, the grounds crew, all of that, all the way up to the top of, you know, the, where, where the light standards are. I mean, he's going to be in charge of that stadium, overseeing the stadium, overseeing the workings of the stadium, as well as UC, UC Health Center. That's great, in my opinion, because if he already knows NFL International, he already knows what stadiums need. And some of those stadiums over there, some of those soccer stadiums, I mean, that's where the NFL's playing, in those soccer stadiums, because they don't have regular football stadiums. Football to them is soccer. And those stadiums are huge. So if he was overseeing that for the last three years, yeah, I think he can handle this. I think he can handle this quite well. Now, I don't know what that entitles. I don't know if that means um, a, an overhaul of Empower Field. I don't know if that means upgrading the, uh, the uh, electronics. 
uh, putting in more Wi-Fi for uh, for fans to interact with the game. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means for UC Health Center either. But it could mean upgrading on the weight room. It could be expanding uh, different parts of the facility that they have now. A bigger meeting room. I don't know what that means. But I like the fact that there's going to be somebody in charge of the stadium as well as UC Health Center. And that's their primary focus. So we got the ownership and group. They've already gotten a CEO and Greg Penner. And now they have the, uh, the president in Leach. I think it's great. So now that everything's in place, ownership, new coaching staff, new quarterback to the Denver Broncos and Russell Wilson, a new season, I can't wait for preseason. And I'll get into that a little bit later uh, on the show. Okay, speaking of a stadium, no new stadium. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. New owner, no new stadium. Well, possibly not for the next 10 years. Now, here's the reason why. First and foremost, the Broncos have 10 more years on the lease for for New Mile High Stadium. That's what it was called when they built it, the New Mile High Stadium. It, It would cost the new owners a lot to get out of the lease or to buy it outright. The ownership group has said they have time to consider all options on a place and design for a new stadium. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let me break it down for you guys. In a nutshell, that means this. No new stadium. I mean, they said it right there. No new stadium. They they even said they have time to consider all options on a place and design for a new stadium. The key word there is time. They have time. Now, my thinking is this. Okay, let's say they cannot get out of the lease or they don't want to buy it out. I mean, they just spent $4.65 billion to purchase the Broncos. I know, that's a tremendous amount of money. I get that, absolutely. But when you're worth 60 to 70 billion, I mean, it's basically a drop in a bucket. And I don't mean to be condescending, and I don't mean to be uh, flippant about it, I'm not. I mean, it's their money, they can do what they want with it. I'm just saying, in the broad scheme of things, 4.65 4.65 billion is not a lot for a person worth 60 to 70 billion. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Now, on the heels of that with this stadium, and they said they have time. To me, that means two things. One, they don't want to spend the money to get out of the lease because, I mean, who knows? Let's say it costs another, I don't know, I don't know, 500 million. Let's just put a half a billion, 500 million. Okay, that's still chump change in a sense for Rob Walton, for the ownership group. If it's 500 million, I don't know what it is to buy it out on. It, that's irrelevant to me because it, it's, it's not it's not factoring into, um, you know, doesn't come out of my pocket, so to speak. Okay, let's say that maybe Rob Walton and the group says, hey, let's slow down on this, guys. We just purchased the team. We're just getting the pieces into place. We're just learning about the community, about Broncos country, about the players, about the organization, how it was run. We're just learning and scratching the surface on this. Let's don't rush into things. Now remember, who is Rob Walton's brother-in-law? Yep, Stan Kroenke. He owns the Avalanche, he owns the Nuggets, he owns Ball Arena, he owns that amusement park that's adjacent to Ball Arena. He owns a tremendous amount of land. Oh, and by the way, he owns the Los Angeles Rams and SoFi Stadium and designed it and built it. Okay. Maybe Rob Walton wants to tap into his brother-in-law's ideas. I don't know if that would be a conflict of interest because it's the Rams, it's the Broncos, the Cronky ownership of the Rams and Walton group ownership of the Broncos. I don't know if that would be conflict of interest. But if it's not... Maybe he wants to tap into him and say, hey, what's a, what's a good what's a good scheme? What's a good plan? Not scheme. What's a good plan to move forward to get a stadium? Okay, do we buy and outright the lease and then own Mile High Stadium? 
and then maybe tear it down and build a brand new one there with uh and buy up some land and put some um uh, you know uh shops around there and restaurants and maybe a, a hotel would that be a way to go or should we just sit on the lease and keep paying it while we look for land possibly between uh dia airport denver international and this and the uh downtown put it halfway in between what's that land gonna cost how you know how long is it gonna take to get permits and this that and the other thing so maybe they're saying okay let's just keep paying on this lease they've made mention several times i've heard uh clippets where they've said that uh that uh, empower field is a uh is a premier stadium it's a state-of-the-art stadium well we all know it's not the state-of-the-art stadium because all you have to do is look at SoFi or Allegiant Stadium and then you realize it's not state-of-the-art it's not it's 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 a very very well-designed stadium I've been there it's a nice stadium they've got great lounges they've got great things for the fans is it state-of-the-art technology wise and, and and such no it's not it's 20 some years old it's not going to be and that's the point is Rob Walton wants to have a state-of-the-art stadium he's he's mentioned that several times he wants top-notch stadium so taking their time and looking for an area and the design of how they want to build and just think of this guys okay this is 2022 let's say that they 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 pay on the lease for five years and that's halfway through the 10 years they still owe then then they start you know the in the process but in the first five years now up to 2027 they're looking for land they're looking for ideas they're looking for technology uh input they're looking for all of these things five years down the road technology is not going to be what it is today guys it's going to be absolutely better much better on, on, on imaginations we can't even think of right now at least i can't maybe some of you out there can but i can't I, I know it's going to get better. I just don't know it in what capacity. So by the time we Broncos have a new stadium, it is going to be astronomically, astronomical. It's going to be incredible. Absolutely incredible. It's going to be top notch, better than SoFi. Absolutely. Because it'll be 15 years later, five years for SoFi or three years, something like that. And then 10 years for for uh, the new Maha Stadium. That's how I see it. So am I concerned that it's they don't want to buy off the lease at this point in time? No, I don't. I'm not concerned. Because if they don't, if they if they can pay off, let's say, like I mentioned, let's say the lease is for 500 million that, that that's left, okay? So if they buy it out, maybe, maybe there's money on top of that they have to pay on top of that. I don't know. I don't know. But when they build the new stadium, I can guarantee it. By the time they build the new stadium, five years, 10 years, however many years, but at least 10 years down the road, that stadium is not going to be 4.5 million or billion. It's going to be like SoFi was. It's going to be more like six or seven billion with the technology and the design. So you got to you gotta think down the road, guys. That's probably his mindset. I don't know. I don't know his mindset. I am just throwing it out there as to how I see it. Okay, let's move on to next topic. Former Denver Bronco, Drew Locke. Former Broncos quarterback Drew Locke will not start for Seattle's first preseason game. That honor is going to the older Geno Smith and not Locke, who's age 25. <coughs> wow. You know why I said wow? Because what did Pete Carroll say? When when the Broncos traded to get Russell Wilson and Drew Locke went to Seattle along with Noah Fant and uh, and some other players and draft picks, what did, what did Pete Carroll say? First thing Pete Carroll said out of his mouth is, Drew Locke is better than any quarterback coming out of the draft. Well, no kidding. Because Drew Locke has had NFL experience and the quarterbacks that came out in the draft had zero 
NFL experience. None, unless you count combine, but that's not NFL experience. So of course he's gonna say he's better. He also said, we are very confident that Drew Locke will be our franchise quarterback. Really? What did it just say? The honor goes to Geno Smith and not Drew Locke? Okay, guys, I know some of you naysayers out there that do, that do like Drew Locke are probably saying, well, it's because Drew Locke is the number one quarterback and they're putting in Geno Smith in game one because uh, Locke isn't going to play until game two of the preseason because that's usually when the, uh, the, the number ones go out. Okay, maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. I don't know. I found it interesting that Pete Carroll says, yeah, Drew Locke is going to be, you know, we, we feel he's going to be our number one uh, franchise quarterback. Oh, but by the way, he's going to be sitting on a bench tonight or when the game is because uh, I'm putting Geno Smith in. Now, most likely, I will say, okay, I will go along with the possibility that it's because Drew Locke is the number one quarterback and they're keeping him out until game two. Well, we'll find out. Because I'm going to be interested to see uh, if Drew. Um, no, let me back up. I'm going to be interested to see if Geno Smith is playing with the number ones. Because if he's playing with the number ones, yep, Drew Locke is not the, the franchise quarterback. He's not the number one. So I'm going to I'm going to check that out. I'm definitely going to check out that game and uh, and and see exactly what uh, is it going to be the ones or the twos that Geno Smith is quarterbacking in Seattle's first game. All right. Let's go to not one, but two. I have two jackass of the week. Here's the first one. Okay, guys. Now, this could easily be... uh, I could easily have have coupled both of these together. But both of them are, they're they're a standalone by themselves, easily, because of the severity of what they've done. So let's get into the first one. Former Seattle Seahawk, Oakland Raiders, and Buffalo Bills running back, Marshawn Lynch. You know why I'm here. Was arrested Tuesday morning around Midnight? Nope. 3 a.m.? 4 a.m.? Nope. Rested Tuesday morning around 7.25 a.m. for allegedly driving under the influence near the Las Vegas Strip. All right. Before I continue, let me go on. Let me let me back up and, and, and say why I went Oakland Raiders. Why? Because this happened in Vegas. Marshawn Lynch used to play for the Raiders. Their first preseason game is in Vegas. Coincidental that Lynch is there? No, I don't think so. I think he came back to hang out with his homies or whatever. Hey, yo, fool. And uh, just have a good time. Well, obviously he had a really good time, or in this case, in my, as I said, bad time, because it gets worse, guys. It gets worse. It's not bad enough that he's out hammered at 7.25 in the morning. But in my opinion, what makes it worse is, is why didn't he call an Uber? Why didn't he take a taxi? Why didn't he get a limo? It's not like the guy's broke. I certainly doubt it. And is he starting at four in the morning drinking? Was it an all-nighter? Did he binge with some of the Raider players or fans or whomever? And then he's off by himself? Where's his buddies? If you've got real buddies, they're not going to let you drive. That's a fact. Absolute fact. So where were they? I don't know. Let me continue. Lynch was transported to the Las Vegas City Jail and booked for driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Okay. All right, that's exactly what, what what's going to happen. That's exactly what they should do. Take him to jail, book him, and then, you know, talk to him. See, hey, what were you doing at 725? Why were you out? Where'd you come from? All that. 
it gets worse. During questioning, Lynch appeared to be completely wasted, cops said, as he kept falling asleep and reeking of booze. Well, that tells me he, he didn't have just two or three beers or cocktails or whatever at, let's say, 4.35 in the morning when he got up. Said, hey, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go have me some drinks. No, I'm not going to be that reeking at uh, 7.25 in the morning if you just had a few pops. That ain't going to happen. This thing had to have happened like way earlier. 8 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, midnight, I don't know. But if you're reeking that bad... Yeah, it's uh, pretty serious, but it gets worse. Here we go. All the while, he was telling officers he had stolen the 2020 Shelby GT500 that he was driving. What? Okay, let me back up a little bit. During questioning, Lynch appeared to be completely wasted, cops said as he kept falling asleep and reeking of booze. All the while, he was telling officers he had stolen the 2020 Shelby GT500 he was driving in. The fact that he was driving and damaged the stolen car obviously makes his case worse as opposed to just being a DUI arrest. Holy cow. Are you serious, Lynch? Really? Hammered at 7.25 in the morning, driving a stolen GT500 Shelby and damaging it, didn't say how bad or what kind, but it's bad enough. You stole a car, then you damage it. And that's not a cheap car. And he admits it to it. Now he realizes, in my opinion, that, uh-oh, I've done something really bad and I am in serious trouble. Yep, you are. Serious trouble. And in Vegas, where they don't mess around, it's not like other cities. Vegas doesn't like this kind of stuff, especially from high-profile people. And Marshawn Lynch is one. Absolutely is one. Marshawn, use your head. Obviously, you didn't. And now you're going to be paying for it. (sighs) These guys never learn. They never learn. And I have another one coming up. Yep. There's two of them this time, guys. And they're both extremely bad on their own accord. All right. Let's go to Roger Goodell. Now, Roger Goodell and the, the NFL commissioner says the league is seeking a tougher penalty for Deshaun Watson because the quarterback's actions were predatory behavior. Watson, Watson said, or I should say, Watson's predatory conduct is a cause, is causing a negative light on the league and its players. No kidding. Absolutely it is. It's a black eye to the NFL, to the Houston Texans. Gotta, you can't forget those guys. They provided the hotel suite. They provided the uh, undisclosed document. They provided the hotel. Yeah, absolutely. It is a negative light on the NFL. A black eye to the Houston Texans, to the entire NFL league, players, other teams, organizations. Absolutely it is. Because it is a reflection of what these guys think they can get away with. And what they can do. Now, we've already, I've already gone over in previous shows that the NFL wants a one-year suspension. That's obvious. For various reasons. For reasons just stated right here. Predatory conduct. Now, predatory conduct means, I mean, you just, you take it upon yourself to just basically be, you know, I don't know, caveman, so to speak. Just take over. You can do what you want. That's not the way it works. And the NFL wants a harsh penalty because of the fact that it was against females. 33 of them. Yes, they settled out of court. Yeah, I know that. But it still happened. He says it was consent. They say it wasn't. NFL says, I want a one-year suspension, period. Are they going to get it? I don't know. 
But Deshaun Watson is slated to play in Cleveland's first preseason game because the um, uh, <laughs> the the new uh, suspension hasn't been handed down. That's why the um, you know the six game suspension doesn't start until uh, game one of the regular season. So he's he's able to play in the preseasons. But if it's longer than a year, well, of course. I mean, it still starts at the beginning of the NFL season. So that's why he's able to play and start, if, if they do start him, in the, uh, in the Cleveland Browns' first uh, preseason game. Okay, let's go to something I don't, I don't want to see this with the Denver Broncos. I really don't. I don't want to see any criminal activity from any of the players. I don't want to see any arrests. I don't want to see anything that is detrimental to the Denver Broncos and the league. I don't want it. Other teams are doing it. Obviously, Deshaun Watson with Cleveland. You know, there's there's other other teams, but Deshaun Watson's obvious. You know, he's first and foremost in the in the in the news these days concerning that. I don't want to see anything. And I know what I'm about to say concerning the Denver Broncos isn't anywhere near the scale of a Deshaun Watson. But I, this is where it starts. It starts, in my opinion, with what I'm going to say. And I don't like it one bit. Here goes. Last Saturday, at Broncos practice, a fight broke out between players. According to multiple reports, third-year defensive tackle McTelvin Akim threw several punches after getting tangled up with offensive guard Zach Johnson. Wait a minute. You're trying to make the team? Okay. Okay. All right, maybe maybe you're, you know, you're you got a you know excessive amount of energy. I don't know. Let me continue. There are two ways to look at this. One, a very negative locker room, dysfunctional, or two, a healthy competitive fire leading up to the upcoming NFL season. Okay, I'm not buying the last one. I am not buying the last one as being fire competitive. Nope, not at all. And I'll tell you why. I go with number one, a very negative locker room dysfunctional. You know why? Because now you're hitting your own players, your own teammates. You know, one's offense and one's defense. So it's not like it's not like one or the other is vying for their position. That's not the case. What did I say? It was a third-year defensive tackle. That's defense. Zach Johnson is an offensive guard. Okay, okay, maybe he didn't like the way Johnson blocked him. Doesn't matter. Do better. If Johnson is smoking the butt, then do better. Try harder. But when you throw punches, the offense is going to stand up for themselves. And I'm not sure the defense is going to stand up for what you did. You know, I mean, come on, Kim. Are you that frustrated that you're third string, perhaps? Second string, perhaps? Are you that frustrated? So now you're going to take it out on, on, on a guard. I'm not saying that's what's happening. I'm just stating my own comments, guys. All right? It's my comments and my take on every single one of these topics. So if his idea is, I'm trying to light a fire, trying to get these guys going. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you don't do it by punching somebody, hitting them. You know, you don't, why are you doing that? All you're going to do is bust your hand if you hit his helmet, if he's got it on, which he probably does. Why are you doing it? He's got shoulder pads. He's got all these things. It's stupid. It doesn't make sense. If you got that much energy and stuff, channel it into knocking him on his keister. Not with your fist, but with your football play. There's a difference. In case you didn't notice, there's a difference. Do I like this? Absolutely not. Don't like it one bit. And then after the game, or after the practice, Coach Hackett made both of those guys, Akim and Johnson, to hug right in front of the rest of the team. I'm not sure I like that either. I know his way is, okay, let's just, you know, bygones be guy, bygones, you know, shake hands, you know, kiss and make up, so to speak. But in front of your own team, I no, 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 no. I would have taken them aside and said, hey, listen, guys, we don't stand for this. 
you know, don't don't make it a public thing. Yes, it happened publicly. The fight happened publicly during practice. I get it. Maybe that's what he's thinking. Maybe I'll embarrass him a little bit and they won't do it again. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of different. Different, yes. Strange, yeah, in a way. I find it kind of strange. But hey, Hackett does things differently. So if it works, fantastic. I hope it is not a locker room a, dis, uh, distraction and it's, and it's not dysfunctional. I don't want that. I want this team to be a unit, cohesive, together, focused, not fighting and dysfunctional. It's not gonna, that's not the way I want the Denver Broncos team to be. All right, let's go on. Yep, this is the second jackass of the week. Okay, here it is, the second jackass of the week. Now, this one is much worse, in my opinion. Now, it depends on the way you look at things as being worse. I understand. Some people look at things differently. To me, this is a lot worse, okay? Here it is. Former NFL running back Frank Gore allegedly grabbed a naked woman by her hair and dragged her across the hallway of an Atlantic City hotel. Wait a minute, wait a minute, come on, man. This isn't prehistoric days. This isn't where you drag a female with a club in your hand. And I'm not saying Frank Gore had a club. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the way he did this. It's totally, totally <coughs> wrong. Water would be nice. Totally wrong. You do not do this. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <coughs> tickle my throat okay it's, it's bad enough to grab her by her hair and drag her down a hallway in a hotel in Atlantic City but she was naked yeah guys that means no clothes now is she acquaintance of Gore doesn't matter is his girlfriend his wife does not matter what matters is he drug her by her hair as she was naked going down the hall. Now, you don't think they got cameras everywhere in the hotel, down the hallway, in the lobby? Yeah, this was obviously undoubtedly recorded. And the police are undoubtedly going to look into this. Sure, they are. Absolutely. But my thinking is this. Okay, if there was an argument, whatever it is, doesn't matter. You don't take it to this level. What is going on with these guys? I know a lot of you guys out there are going to say that it's uh, could be CTE. Okay, maybe it is. I don't know. Doesn't matter to me because if there's family and friends and this and that, they're gonna notice changes. They're gonna notice behavioral differences. This thing just doesn't rear its ugly head one day and person snaps that's not what I've heard I've heard that that people have said wow he's he's acting different kind of like he's got uh bipolar or something well get it checked out yes I know that you cannot diagnose CTE on a live brain it, a person has to be dead I understand that but there's other symptoms like I said it looks like it's uh uh bipolar get it checked if they come up back and they say no it's not bipolar uh, well, then keep checking. And if, and if they eliminate everything, then that would tell me it points to CTE. I don't know if there's any treatment that they could do now. I doubt it. I haven't heard of any. But the thing of it is, is, you know, things like this are going to continue to happen. If it is CTE, then I'm, I mean, that doesn't excuse the actions. It gives a reason possibly, but doesn't excuse the actions. The actions are still there. The, the deed was still done. I'm not finished. It's it, There's still a little bit more to go. Let me finish up. The, al the allocation took place July 31st, which led Gore being charged with simple assault charge. Simple? Pulling a female by her hair 
down a hallway as she's naked. That's a simple assault? Come on, man, you have got to be kidding me. Does Atlantic City have that lax of laws? That this is a simple assault? I I mean, I'm I'm dumbfounded. I absolutely cannot believe it was it was listed as simple assault. I continue. Gore allegedly forcibly there it is forcibly is an assault not simple not simple at all in my mind in my opinion not whatsoever if you're forcing somebody that's not simple in any case i continue gore allegedly forcibly grabbed the female and violently dragged her simple <laughs> no way shape or form is this simple gore is expected to be in court in mid october I hope they throw the book at him. Are you kidding me? Dragging a female by her hair and forcibly forcibly grabbed her and violently dragged her. And it's simple assault. Oh, come on. BS. That is not simple assault whatsoever. Absolutely not. And again, where are these guys thinking that they're better and above the law? because it's obvious here in these two jackasses of the week that they're not they're not above the law not with Frank Gore and not with Marshawn Lynch and I hope both of them pay dearly absolutely hope they pay dearly <sighs> okay I move on <sighs> all right two more topics guys and we'll wrap it up all right Broncos interest The Denver Broncos have shown interest in Eagles receiver Jalen Rieger. As for the value, the Eagles coach said, "I think what we'll get in return will be probably not much more than a 6th or 7th round pick." Perfect. I'd do it. I would do it in a microsecond. Absolutely. Reason being because we don't have Tim Patrick. And We've had some dings with Cortland Sutton. We've had some dings with uh KJ Hamler. You can't have m- too many wide receivers of talent for Russell Wilson to throw the ball to. Okay? I know that Wilson is is built up chemistry with Okawebana. We got Dolich, the other tight end. He's banged up. Who's he going to throw to? Who? Jerry Judy, the only one? Don't triple cover him. I'm being facetious guys. I know we're going to have more wide receivers on the field. I'm talking about our top notch guys. Tim Patrick out for the season. Cortland Sutton is 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 playing phenomenal in practice. But he was dinged. And of course you're going to get dings. I'm not talking about little bumps and bruises. I'm talking about something serious. Then you had KJ Hamler with a knee. I understand he's okay and it wasn't ACL. Thank goodness. You also have Dolich the tight end. What's wrong with going out and getting a Jalen Rieger? Why not? He's a 3-year pro. He's still very young. He still has a whole lot of uh upside to him. Working with Russell Wilson would be phenomenal for him. And it gives Russell Wilson another target. I haven't heard anything about whether or not it's going to happen. I don't know. All I'm saying is I hope it does. Because we could use another wide receiver with Tim Patrick sideline for the 2022 season. Why not? Hey Peyton. Hey George, are you listening? Hello. Are you listening? Pick up the phone. Call Jalen Rieger's agent. Do it promptly. Be a good move, I think. Be an absolute great move. All right. Let's go to the last topic of this show. First preseason game. The Denver Broncos first preseason game will be will excuse me, will be played at Empower Field tomorrow night 6 p.m. Denver time. It will be the Cowboys in town. The Broncos are expected or excuse me, we are not expected to see a lot of action from the number 1 veterans. Well, that'll be interesting. I'd like to see if Russell Wilson goes out there for at least a series or two. I definitely like to see him go out for a series because I like to see what what he has. The fans that are going to be attending the game want to see what he has. 
They've seen him in practice. They've seen him in OTAs. They want to see him in real live NFL action at Empower Field. So do I. Do I want to see it in game one? Sure. A series. Maybe two at best. Nothing more. I don't want him hit hard. I don't want him hurt. And then get him out. Put in our, our number twos. Absolutely. Give them a ton of work. And then maybe in the second half, put in our threes. I don't know. But I don't want to see Russell Wilson out there very long. I want to save him for week two. I know it's on the road in Minnesota. I understand that. But if he plays, let's say, a quarter in Minnesota, what does he play when he comes home against the uh, Arizona Cardinals? I believe that's who it is. Yeah, Cardinals. So if he comes home and plays <clears throat> game three of the preseason against the Cardinals, does he play a, a half a, half of uh, half a game? Does he play just one or two series again? I don't know. But I would love to see him game one at home against the Dallas Cowboys for at least a series or two. Give the fans what they want. Give the NFL what they want. Give Broncos country what we all want. And that is to see Russell Wilson, the number ones, and to see how they perform. I know it's preseason, guys, but I'm excited. I'm totally excited. Can't wait for tomorrow night. Five o'clock my time. I cannot wait. That's it, guys. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I greatly appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up button. Tell your friends. Um, tell anybody you want to talk to about the show. I greatly appreciate it. Before I get out of here, let me give you the other shows that are on this network. On Tuesday, it is a 5280 podcast featuring Madungus Creevy, his good friend, uh, Glenn Hauser, Cam, and Boggins. That goes live every Tuesday, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's changed from 4 to 5. It's now 5, 6, 7, and 8. That goes live every Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, it's the Wild Wild West featuring a fan from every AFC team, Broncos, Raiders, Chargers, and Chiefs. That goes live every Tuesday, 4.30, 5.30, 6.30, and 7.30. And then on Thursday, we have a rewind. And it's it's a replay of a show from the previous week. That drops every Thursday, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then on Friday, this show, Broncos Breakdown with me, Bronco Bill, drops every Friday, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Yes, that's moved from 11 a.m., to now 5 p.m., 5, 6, 7, and 8. That's thanks again, guys, for watching. And once again, we will talk to you next Friday. Until then, enjoy the Bronco game on Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We will talk to you next Friday. Bye-bye.